One of the big mottos here at The Flute Practice is that it is not what you practice, but rather how you practice it. But you could be making one of these really common practice mistakes that is interfering with how you are practicing. So if you're feeling frustrated with your progress and your practicing, well then listen up, you might just be making one of these mistakes. Hi everyone, my name is Tatiana and this is The Flute Practice, a space to help you on your flute playing journey. The first really big mistake that students make is that they just waste time. And there are many, many layers to this problem. One of the common ways to waste time is just to play pieces over and over and over again without stopping in between, just kind of play them through and, I don't know, magically hope that they'll get better. They won't. Another really big way to waste time is to practice mindlessly, where you're not actually engaging your brain with a system and a plan. Or perhaps you just don't understand the process of practicing and you've never broken it down in a logical way that actually makes sense. So you feel overwhelmed and you just kind of dive in and don't really know what you're doing. Now, if this is you, we have created a whole bunch of content to help you with your practice planning. We've dropped some links down below. There's some blog posts, there's some other videos, and you can really dive into this and solve this problem. But ask yourself this question next time. Do you actually have a purpose for practicing what you are busy practicing or are you just kind of mindlessly going through it hoping it will get better? The next really big problem that I see is that students are prioritizing quantity over quality of practice. Have you ever wondered to yourself how much should you be practicing? Well I've heard this question so many times from students and I think that you're asking the wrong question. Rather than worrying how much you should be practicing, you should rather be worrying what types of things you should be practicing and what the quality of that practice is. Because when we're worried about how long we should be practicing, we're just trying to fill up hours. We're like, okay, I've got to practice three hours a day and then I'll get better. But if you're just going to be wasting time for three hours a day, playing through things too fast over and over again and not really actually learning anything, well, I'd like to argue that 10 minutes of really careful, thoughtful practice is going to get you further than those three hours. That might be a slightly controversial opinion, but I'd like to challenge you on that. Stop trying to practice for hours and hours a day. Rather, ask yourself, how much can I get done in the shortest space of time? The other big mistake that students make is that they don't give their practicing enough time. And again, there are a few levels to this. On the one hand, change and progress takes time and it's those consistent amounts of work over time that really bring meaningful progress. Students get impatient, they don't allow for the process and sometimes they even skip a whole bunch of steps along the way, they start playing things that are too challenging for them and this is because they don't trust that the process just takes time. But this is actually also true for kind of the micro level of practicing. When we're practicing and we know that I'm not going to fix this problem today, rather I'm going to fix this problem over a few days, a few weeks, even a few months, then it completely changes our approach because we no longer are frustrated and angry when it's not coming right in this very moment. And rather we do our little bit and know tomorrow I'm going to come back to it and patiently keep chipping away at the problem. I can promise you when you get this, when you really understand that practice takes time, it changes the way that you practice your instrument every single day. Another really big problem is that we spend a lot of our time rehearsing problems. And let me explain this. Sometimes we actually practice in a mistake, like we're practicing this bit over and over and over again, and we keep making the same mistake in the same spot, but instead of like slowing down, being thoughtful about it, figuring out what the actual problem is, we just end up rehearsing the same mistake over and over. And before we know it, it's become a habit and part of the music. So that's one of the ways that we actually rehearse or practice in problems. But there are other kinds of problems that we tend to practice too. We tend to practice patterns of tension. So we end up playing really tight and tense and we end up practicing that in. We get into a performance situation or a band situation and suddenly we're wondering, why am I so tight and tense? Well, my friends, you were practicing it all week in your practice room. So make sure that you're not practicing in patterns of tension. We could also be practicing really unhelpful or negative ways of thinking. I have certainly been guilty of this over the years, and it's something that is actually quite personal and 
can take you on a little bit of a deep dive of your mind, but I can promise you, if you can start really becoming aware of the types of thoughts that you have when you're practicing, it can change everything. A really common thought that students have is you're getting up to a tricky bit and your brain goes, you can't play this bit. You're gonna mess this up. You have no idea what you're doing. Why are you even trying to play the flute? Why are you wasting your time? What are people gonna think about you? And the thoughts go on and on and on and on. And you need to be very careful about those patterns of thinking in your practicing because what you whisper in a practice session, you scream in a concert. And those thoughts will come and find you. I say concert, it could be a lesson or a band rehearsal, any moment where you are under pressure, suddenly those thoughts become really loud and present. And I have found over the years that making sure that I stop those types of thoughts or at least notice them and then talk myself out of them can be really, really, really helpful in becoming a more confident and reliable performer. Listen carefully next time you're practicing to the types of thoughts that you're having and make sure that you do not practice your problems. The last really big mistake I see students make is that they do not find balance in their practice. One of two things tends to happen. Either a student is really gearing to go, they're putting in a lot of like hardcore technical work, they're doing their scales and their studies and their technical exercises, and eventually they kind of just burn out because they've lost the passion and the love for the instrument. On the other hand, you have those students that just want to play all the fun stuff, they just want to keep their love alive, they just want to have the joy of it, but eventually they get really frustrated because they feel that they're just not making the progress that they want to be making. And so they kind of give up eventually because it just loses its sense of joy. And the truth is we need a balance of both of these things. We need those things that help us to grow and push us and move us forward, but we also need those things that are just fun to do one of the most heartbreaking things is when a student says to me, oh, I'm so sorry, I was practicing my Disney songs this week, or I was just, you know, playing around on Tom Play. And I'm like, what? That's so great. I'm so glad for you. Why are you apologizing for this? Guys, you should never, ever, ever feel that playing things for fun is a bad thing. It's a fantastic thing. And as a teacher, we love that you do this. We love it so much. But you also need to make sure that you eat your vegetables, do exercise and brush your teeth. And that is the technical work that needs to be done on a fairly regular basis. But you're also going to go through phases in life where you're going to do more of the one and less of the other and vice versa. And that is okay too. You don't always have to be in this like perfect state of harmony and balance. Sometimes life is messy and topsy-turvy and it is okay sometimes to just be having fun and playing things or maybe just be doing that nice growth work. Now, all of these practice problems can absolutely be avoided if you have a good plan. When you know what it is you want to be doing and how you're going to do that, you are going to be much less likely to make these mistakes. If I've planned already ahead of time how I'm going to be working on a piece of music, for example, then I am much less likely to go through it mindlessly. If I have a plan where I know over the next month I'm going to be learning a whole bunch of notes, then I can just really slowly and patiently chip away at it. I give it enough time, I'm patient, I don't get frustrated. It allows me to really focus on the quality of that practice, to know what needs to be done in a day rather than just trying to fill up my six hours of practice. You really shouldn't be practicing for six hours. Like that is not healthy, right? Now I know creating a good plan is really challenging and very, very, very difficult. And so I've created a super amazing, awesome resource for you guys. Over the years, I've become pretty obsessed with planning and how to plan practice well. And this year we have put together a flute journal specifically designed for your flute practice. This journal is an A5 coil bound book, so it's super practical, easy to carry around with you, really nice and easy to write in. And it's got some really lovely practice plan templates, which will help you to structure your practice, know what it is you need to be practicing and give you a chance to fill in those blocks and plan your practice well. But my favorite part about this journal is that it allowed me the opportunity to really sit down and formulate my practice strategy, sharing this with you guys and teaching you guys how to write your own practice plan. And since we are launching this journal this year, we are going to be doing a practice planning workshop along with this journal launch, where we are going to help you guys in person live formulate your own 
practice plans. We've dropped links to all of those things down below. You can go buy the book right away. We're shipping it worldwide. And if you would like to join that workshop, go and do so now. If you're too late, well, there will be a recording, but still, you will have missed it. Happy practicing, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.